Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of In My Experience slash Topical Conversation. I wanted to kind of talk about gaming in 2021. Not too long ago, I decided that I was going to uninstall all my games and kind of quit the gaming completely. I found my way back to them as kind of like a, I don't know, comfort slash... I found myself with more free time than I was expecting, and I missed it. I did. I thought that maybe gaming was a reason that, like, I wasn't happy, uh, and I was wasting time in gaming. In reality, I realized that I kind of enjoyed gaming, and it was a great way to, at least for me, to de-stress and enjoy my evenings. However, with that being said, I kind of want to talk about how gaming just, in general lately, isn't hitting the same it's it's missing something i don't know if it's just all of the big games that are coming out are all the same if we're stuck in this stagnant point in gaming where everyone's kind of you know they have their games that they play and they just people don't want to move around and try new things i could kind of see that being one of the main reasons i feel this way because it just seems like i want to talk about like when fortnite hit right when the craze of fortnite hit gaming was at its peak in my eyes we were seeing things that we've never seen before we were getting streams with hundreds of thousands of people youtube videos getting hundreds of millions of views and gaming was a, the biggest thing on the internet everyone was talking about it and now a couple years have passed fortnite has definitely simmered down and we've gotten a lot of games that are in that you know battle royale genre as well as some of your other more popular gaming genres seem to be getting more and more clones you know even call of duty made a battle royale there's rumors that halo might throw in a battle royale at some point but it just seems like the creativity and uniqueness of games is going away and it's just games are copying whatever's popular and don't get me wrong like i get it you know people who make games make it well most of the people who make games are making it for money you know you can't you can't fault them for trying to cash in on whatever's popular at the moment but it seems like it really has taken away from a lot of what gaming used to be like even competitive multiplayer used to be different. It, it was more enjoyable. It was more passionate. Now it's toxic. It's way more toxic than it ever used to be. Like don't get me wrong. Like Call of Duty lobbies and back when like you would join a lobby and both teams could talk shit on each other. Like it was super toxic. You would hear the worst shit ever. But today it's like they're not having fun and being toxic. I was still having fun playing like MW2 and shit and people being toxic. Like I like people would shit talk in between lobbies and then I would enjoy playing the game. Now it's like you don't really enjoy the game. Cause it's just so hyper competitive. I don't know if it's just because there's so much money to be made now. Everyone's making content, everyone's trying to, you know, be the next big guy in the scene or uh, it really it, I can't put my finger on what the issue is, but it's in all the games. It's Apex, Fortnite, Call of Duty, whatever your other big competitive shooters are nowadays. It really seems like that genre has just sucked in a lot of toxic behavior. Valorant, Counter-Strike. I mean, Counter-Strike's still about the same as it always has been. It's in Valorant too. Like You get kind of more of a mature audience, but the toxic behavior is still there. And don't even get me started on the league community. I feel like the league community is the reason why league isn't even, well, I don't want to say isn't relevant, but isn't as popular as it used to be. But at the same time, it, it became stale. You know, there's only so many years you can play the same type of game over and over and over. I do think that we have a huge progression with like smaller title games. There's always games dropping that are just hidden gems that you can got to pick out of the air, go and find like, like I just I ran into a game called Hades that I didn't know was super popular. It's a roguelike. Fantastic. 
amazing game. But it doesn't seem like we're getting huge title games that are really like groundbreaking aside from like your occasional god of war or you know the pokemon series is still popping off but we don't have i haven't seen an original ip that i can think of off the top of my head that has really blown me away in a couple years you know i think that we're by the time this is out we're either going to have one or it's going to come out soon i think that's elden ring but at the same time like I'm a huge Souls guy. I, I love Firm. I, I think they make some of the best games. But there's so many clones now of Souls games. So, and even though I think Elden Ring is going to be huge and fantastic, it's still a genre now that has gotten tons and tons and tons of clones. Now, I don't know if maybe it's just there really isn't any unique ideas out there anymore. Or if it's just really not worth it. I, I see a lot of unique ideas in horror games. I've been playing a lot of horror games. I think personally some of the most fun video games I've played in the last couple of years were the Resident Evil, Biohazard and Resident Evil, uh, the one that was the follow-up. Great stories. Horror games are fantastic. But we're also seeing in the horror genre this impulse. Be, I mean, it's popular, but that also has brought in so many like people making these dog shit horror games to try and cash in on that you know that immediate rush you know we, we get like these party games like among us or fall guys that are super fun for a couple months and then they simmer off like the content creators blow a game up huge it's ginormous and then when the views start going down and people are less interested in the game it just kind of goes to the wayside like it will have this fan base now They'll play it for multiple years, but the popularity has gone. The big driving force is gone. And I, it, and I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know why I'm bitching about it. Cause I mean, everyone has their own taste, but <clears throat> I can't be the only one who really feels like gaming just is missing something. You know, maybe, maybe we need another big game that takes everyone's attention. That's, you know, something different, something new. I think there's some games coming out in 2022 and on, which I'll talk about, that have potential. I mean, even a lot of people are saying that 2022 might be the biggest year since like 2011 when we had, you know, 10 or 15 of the hugest games out. Uh, I, I guess maybe what I'm trying to say is I think multiplayer is going to die soon and people aren't realizing it. Now, I'm not saying like no one's going to play it, but I think people are going to really start moving away from it. I noticed as I've gotten older, multiplayer games really aren't super enjoyable. I don't know if it's like, I'm still a competitive person at heart and I, I love winning and I love when I do play multiplayer games, I do take it pretty serious. But at the same time, like I, I would find myself playing you know two or three matches and just being like i guess i'm done this is kind of the same shit where i used to be able to play you know black ops or mw2 for like nine hours straight i think it's i think it's maturing as a gamer you kind of start realizing like okay well there's other shit out there that's way more enjoyable and way more fun and i i think that's kind of the root of it because i think people stop realizing that games are supposed to be fun and they take it too serious. And I don't have any personal experience. I'm not, I'm not making this video because I got, you know, shit talked or something like that. It's just my general observation the past, you know, little while of it just seems like gaming is a little lackluster at the moment. You know, we, we've had the fall of some big titans too. Like, you know, Blizzard is completely falling apart at the seams, you know, Activision's part of it. The Call of Duty franchise is kind of starting to slip pretty far, which we've never seen. Halo isn't getting the attention that it used to. You know, we're 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 not getting those big moments anymore. You know, when Call of Duties were dropping, it was like, okay, well, it's Call of Duty time. I I think for the past three or four, no one's really gave a shit. 
And most people are just like, well, I'm not going to spend the money. I'm just going to play uh, the Battle Royale because it's free. Uh, the other thing that I kind of want to talk about before we got into like new up and coming games is this new idea of pay play to earn. I'm really don't know if I like how this is going to pan out. You know, with NFTs and crypto everywhere, that's all we all, all anyone wants to talk about. We're now getting in spaces where games are going to be made on the blockchain where when you play, you earn crypto or NFTs or whatever the currency is in that game. And I just, I guess I just don't quite, I, I, I just don't know what I think of this. And I'd love to hear opinions of anyone who has looked into this or researched it. I've even like, I got an advertisement for one of them. I don't want to name it because I don't know the legitimacy of it, but pretty much you download this app. It's through Microsoft or the Apple store and you play games. They have available games right here. CSGO, League, Dota, Fortnite, PUBG, Valorant, Rainbow Six, um, I'm not familiar with this one. Overwatch, Warzone, Teamfight Tactics, Apex Legends, Rocket League, and Hearthstone. So like your your big like nine or ten multiplayer games. From my understanding is you can just play these games and over time you earn their currency and you can buy shit. Like right here, there's $10 Nintendo eShop card, Resident Evil 5 Steam CD key, Fallout 3 Steam CD key, $5 Amazon gift card, Outlast 2. Like you can actually earn, like there's a 1380 Riot points for League of Legends. Like you earn stuff to be able to, you earn tokens and you're able to buy tangible, valuable items. Uh, and I think I, that's kind of what it looks like the future is going to hold is you know, these games are going to have some sort of, you know, pay to earn or play to earn type of system. I think it would be interesting for gamers who like, you know, are really, I mean, okay, I guess it depends on what exactly is going on. If it's like a system where, you know, you can pay or you can play and if you're getting wins and, you know, doing achievements or whatever and you get rewarded for it, I think that's kind of cool. If it's just, hey, if you play League of Legends for 10 hours while this app's running and mining crypto on your computer, um, you know, you can earn this much money. That's kind of what I see is going on. That's what I kind of think is going to go on is this like you install this thing that is, you know, running some sort of crypto thing, crypto mining on your system to earn money. And then they're rewarding you by saying, hey, play these games and we'll give you stuff. So, you know, they're making a profit and giving you a piece of it. I don't think it's all bad, right? Like, depending on if it's legit or not. But at the same time, is it going to turn into... I, I feel like it's going to turn more into games not being fun anymore. You know, that, that was the whole point of gaming originally is you have fun you you do something that's enjoyable and you know maybe it's just me but i really have to dig into games that are obscure or way off of the norm to even be interested because i've seen so many so much of the same shit you know if it doesn't have a good story or a unique idea or a different type of gameplay i'm just not it's just not going to do it for me you know, maybe I'm being too picky. I don't know. But how many times can I play a Battle Royale? How many times can I play a multiplayer game? How many times can I play, you know, the same type of MMO over and over? How many times can I play a League of Legends clone? A MOBA? You know, it, it's rinse and repeat of the same shit. And we haven't had anything that has been groundbreaking in a while. I think we need a new genre. I think Battle Royale was the last one, and it's fucking, it's saturated. You know, I, I just don't know what it is. MMOs were kind of having a big comeback. Final Fantasy XIV was huge. 
popping off. That's kind of simmered off. But we have a couple big MMOs coming out soon. But then we had New World that has lost 90% of its launch audience. There's only 10% of people who bought the game that are still playing. So the pro and the other problem too is on the develop developer side not realizing how savage people are nowadays. They're not like people are playing and beating games at a rate that never existed. You know, and people are the the skill level of gaming is by far different. It, it's so much higher now. Your average gamer would absolutely destroy your high performing gamer of 10 years ago even like it's the the level is so much higher and i don't know if maybe that's just what the game developers fear is like if they don't put in these like reoccurring things the game will just fall like into obscurity because people blow through it too fast like new world i mean there was people who are max level in new world within a week and a half or two weeks and then they had within another two weeks three weeks they had everything completed and that game is supposed to be an mmo that is lasting a long time you know another example of mmos failing is like world of warcraft and like burning crusade and shit there was people who cleared all of the content within like the first week and a half two weeks like leveled up and cleared the content I, I don't I'm not a game developer but there needs to be something that comes out that really like gives those savages something to look forward to because what ends up happening is they beat these new games and then they're like I guess I'll just go back to playing Apex every night I'll go back to playing Fortnite or Warzone so it's there like, I feel like there's something like, there's a potential for so much money and so much fame and, and and glory in the gaming industry right now, if there was just an original IP or idea that just gets everyone in. Because you can see people are hungry for it. You know, Fall Guys came out, and for like two or three months, it was the biggest thing on the fucking platforms. Among Us came out. Biggest thing on the platform. Like, people are hungry for those the new thing. Because there's just not anything big out. Like the, something's gonna break, and maybe it'll be one of these games we're talking about. You know, maybe it will be. I, I haven't gone through a lot of this, but maybe there's something on here that will be. You know, single player games are interesting because I mean that's my cup of tea now. Is I prefer like playing like single player, story driven, or very unique indie gameplay type video games because like i can sit down and enjoy it and like you know if i want to be a savage and blow through a game i can or i can really get all the intricates of the story and you know have a good time while i'm doing it plus i make gaming videos so you know it creates better content for in my opinion than the millions of multiplayer you know cod videos and apex videos that are out there but anyways I, I think the first big game that's coming out soon that's going to break the internet for maybe two or three weeks is Elden Ring. Uh, I hope that they don't make the game too easy to try and appease audiences because, you know, Dark Souls games and Bloodborne and all of that aren't user-friendly. <laughs> I hope that they don't fold on difficulty, and I really hope that it's a masterpiece like it looks like. Uh, if it is, it will be the biggest thing for a little while, but it doesn't have staying power, you know. We got Pokemon Legends coming out, another Pokemon game. People will blow through that in a while. We do have Rainbow Six Extraction. Uh, let's see here, formerly known as Rainbow Six Quarantine. <laughs> they changed the name. We're now looking at Rainbow Six Extraction, a name change for very good reasons, of course. This is a spinoff from Rainbow Six Siege. Offering similar cooperative multiplayer action where you must work with your squad to combat and defeat a type of parasite-esque alien called the Arcanines. I mean, that sounds kind of cool. It, it looks like it could be like 
you know, a Left 4 Dead type, Bloodborne type game. And that could be really popular. But we saw Back 4 Blood came out. I personally think Back 4 Blood is fantastic. Irrelevant already. Hardly anyone's playing it. Uh, we got Dying Light 2. That will be a fantastic follow-up to the second one. But is it going to be groundbreaking and really take the take the world by storm probably not people will play it and beat it in the first week and you know it'll fall off into obscurity we have something called saifu not familiar with this one it's a brand new game from slow slow clap the developer that gave us absolver i don't know that what it is what that one is and this though you play as a young kung fu student looking for vengeance after the murder of his family the game is focused on a unique aging mechanic where if you make a mistake, you can trade off your life to try again and learn from your errors. But get too old and you will die, forcing you to start over again. So it sounds like a unique twist on roguelike type games. That's another genre. I love roguelikes. I really do. I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire. Hades is a roguelike. Like uh, Binding of Isaac's always on my playlist, you know, every couple months. Like I'm a big fan of roguelike. Saturated market. It really is. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, so a follow-up to Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm sure that'll be fantastic. There's Elden Ring. You know, that was announced, yeah, it says in 2019, the next From Software. Like, the biggest thing is it's the story is done by George R. R. Martin. So I really think that we could just get this huge, epic masterpiece. I really do. And who knows, that, that could be one of the games that has some staying power for multiple months because it's going to take time to, you know, for people to really get into it. Gran Turismo 7, another, there's seven Gran Turismo games. I enjoy racing games, don't get me wrong, but to me it's like the when new phones come out every year now. It's like, oh, there's another Gran Turismo game. Oh, there's another Madden game. Oh, there's another 2K game, like. There's nothing new about them. It's the same shit over and over and over again. Triangle Strategy, a Switch game. Sounds kind of cool. As a second game in the H2D2 series, Triangle Strategy features the sprite-style graphics we saw in Octopath Traveler. I've heard of that game. To bring us a new strategy RPG, playing as newly appointed Lord Serona, you'll command warriors on the battlefield making big decisions that will shape the fate of the continent of Norzilia and find yourself caught up in the power play between nations. I mean a cool little strategic game, maybe some story. Uh, we got Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I assume this is a Borderlands spinoff. Yep. Tiny Tina Lands Wonderland is a fantasy inspired Borderlands spinoff foc focusing on the titlu titular Borderlands character Tiny Tina, voiced by Ashley Brunch Birch. The game will be a story-driven co-op campaign for up to four players, but unlike other Borderlands titles, will be a high fantasy setting full of monsters, treasures, and even Dragon Lord. Tiny Tina makes the rules in the world, though, like some kind of dungeon master, so expect... I have... I think this has already come out. It was shitty. Tiny, I personally think Tiny Tina is one of the worst characters in the Borderlands universe. Whatever. A uh, Stalker 2, never played Stalker 1, says in this one you'll be exploring the vast Chernobyl exclusion zone in the highly anticipated sequel to the original title. The zone is a much tougher place to survive than before, especially after the second explosion hit the nuclear reactor. There are violent mutants, deadly anomalies, and warring factions all to content, all to contend with, and an, in an, and an incredible power at the center of the zone that may provide an even more serious threat. That sounds pretty fucking good. I like that. Is it a multiplayer or just a, a solo horror game? Like, okay, that's a there's a couple other genres I want to talk about. Survival, horror, survival games. I feel like those were getting really popular, and now that genre is kind of stagnant, so maybe like a really good survival type game. Because I know we got The Forest 2 coming out, I think 2022 that could be really good that that might be a genre that could bring a lot of staying power and you know maybe take over 
this stagnant gaming landscape at the moment. Uh, what, what was I going to say? There's one other thing, one other genre I wanted to talk about. Oh, the, I don't know what genre you want to call it, but I do think that there could be a really big opportunity with a game similar to Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> Excuse me. I think Escape from Tarkov is a fantastic game, but there's a lot that could be done better in that game and a lot more potential, I think, in either a studio that has more money or, you know, a studio with a little bit more creative ideas. You know, there was a game that I really enjoyed with my buddies. It was called Hunt Showdown. And it's similar in the sense that you go into a map, complete a mission, get gear and supplies, and leave. If you die, though, you're done. Kind of similar to Tarkov. And that game could have really been huge, but it just didn't... Like, it, it's gaining popularity still, but it just didn't have, like, the speed of content coming out to really hold its own. But I do think that that's a genre that could be really tapped for something amazing on like a grander scale like I, i've played a little bit of escape from tarkov i've watched a little bit of it i think it's a fantastic game but picture like an escape from tarkov where there's you know the the battle royale aspect but like tons of people like tons and tons of people and you know you could really get like a fucking like someone could join the game that is like leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else. And you might even have to team up with randoms, you know, have like a proximity chat, you know, meet people in the wild and be like, Hey man, like, did you see so-and-so's in this match? Like, dude, he's got this, 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 and this supply. Like we're not, I can, we can't beat him straight up, but like if we team up and get some other people, maybe we could take them, you know, and then there'd be reward systems and whatnot. Like, I think that could be a really big, like, competitive long-lasting newish genre with like some potential uh let's see here we have a game called for spoken it says luminous productions team is made up of some of the developers who worked on final fantasy 15 as the debut adventure from the studio for spoken follows the story of freya a young woman from new york who finds herself in a hostile world of athea with magic powers parkour and lots of other worldly creatures. Forspoken also boasts a host of established writers such as Gary Witta, Allison Reimer, Todd Stashwich, and Amy Hinn. I mean, that, that sounds pretty dope. I don't know anything about that, but I'm always down for these new, you know, new ideas with, you know, great writers. Oh, let's see here. We got a Nintendo Switch game. This looks like, oh yeah, fucking Kirby in the Forgotten Land. It'd be cute, but that's not a big game. We don't need to talk about it. Redfall. Uh, let's see here. Arcane Austin is making a brand new open world. It's an open world co-op shooter called Redfall. Set in the island town of Redfall, Massachusetts, this place is under siege by vampires who have blocked out the sun and complete access to the island. You're trapped with a handful of other survivors who must team up and use innovative weaponry to try to become the ultimate vampire slayers. Think UV blasters and state guns, and you're getting there. That sounds kind of dope. I, I'm a bit. I like co-op shooters, and I like co-op shooters like Left 4 Dead, where you could also play multiplayer, where like there's a team of four people, and then there's like a team of four people playing like potentially the vampires, because then you got that competitive mindset. Uh, this one I'm gonna shit on. I I don't know where the fan bases really stand. A new Saints Row game. I I was so over the last Saints Row games. I think they got way too silly. This new one looks like it's going to take the silly still, but maybe have some potential. I just, if I'm going to play a game like that, we all know it's going to be GTA, and GTA 6 could be within the next couple years. And that will be the game that really does break the internet for a little while. We have Starfield, which is uh, is going to be huge. 
I think Starfield's another reason why 2022 could potentially be one of the biggest years in gaming. It's Bethesda's first new IP in 25 years. Starfield is wrapped up in Mystique and... Um, yeah, Mystique and Mystery right now. And we're not even sure if it's if it'll be releasing on this generation of console hardware. Here's what we do know. It's set in an open world RPG set in space and Bethesda has been working on it for years. I can't remember when Starfield was announced. Like 2017? Uh, sorry, but that's about it for now. But at least the studio is kind enough to confirm its existence after so many whisper, whispers amongst the industry. Given Bethesda's per, uh, pedigree, Starfield is now one of the most promising titles of the future. I can't wait to play it. I don't think we're getting it for multiple years. And I think they're going to make... I don't know. I have this weird thing that we're going to get Starfield and Skyrim 6 on the next generation of consoles. And they're going to be the... Or I should say Elder Scrolls 6. Sorry, not Skyrim 6. They're going to be the biggest things for a long time. Like if you if you weren't gaming when Skyrim came out originally, not like the seven re-releases, but like when it originally came out, it was a big deal. And it was one of those games that started branching into non-gamers. Like I feel like Skyrim was the first step of really bringing gaming into like households that didn't have it originally everyone was talking about skyrim people who never played a video game before skyrim was their first video game like it was i was in high school when skyrim came out everyone was talking about skyrim where they were at what they were doing you know what level they were what kind of build they were doing like from your nerds to your fucking jocks to your everybody was playing skyrim when it comes out again, I think the same thing's gonna happen. I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to live up to the potential that we all hope it is. But we just have to continue to be patient. Uh, Sonic Frontiers, I'm not even gonna waste my time. They have not produced a good Sonic game in who knows how long. Uh, Nightingale, I think could be a pretty awesome game. It's from Bioware. Um, or former Bioware boss, uh, Aaron Flynn. First revealed during the Game Awards of 2021, Nightingale is described as a shared world survival game. This takes place in a Victorian fantasy setting. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? You'll be able to play the survival of interest solo or with friends and other players you meet in the world, according to the official site. Testing is set to go live somewhere next year. So... I think that that could be pretty cool. To me, I if you watch the trailer, it does look like it could be like New World, but with guns and, mo and more monsters. We saw how New World is right now. And I don't think New World's dead. I think New World's in a state right now where Amazon's like, okay, what do we need to do to get people back? And I think we're going to get within the... Within a couple years, I think we're going to get some big patches with big content, more in-game, better PvP, better servers. I mean, Amazon's got the money. And I think New World will make a huge comeback again whenever they decide to get, like, a huge content patch. I'm talking, like, 50, 60 gigs worth of more shit. Uh, we got Marvel's Midnight Suns um xcom series xcom is a fantastic game so they're going to make a marvel's xcom type game obviously god of war ragnarok's going to be huge the last god of war was a masterpiece they have the new ragnarok to be tbs in 2022 if we get it i don't know i don't think we will i think we'll probably see it in 2023 but we all know god of war is going to be amazing and popular this one I'm actually really excited for. Really low-key game in my eyes. It's called Oxenfree. Two, well, it's called Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals. I played the first Oxenfree, um, I don't know, like three or four years ago on Twitch. And uh, it, it was fantastic. It's like a 2D mystery thriller type game. 
where you walk around and try and figure out stuff. I had a blast playing that game. Fantastic story and super unique. But that's not, it's not, it will never be a game that I was talking about earlier that's going to like revitalize the gaming industry right now. It'll just appease the people who played the first one like me. Like, I, I will for sure buy it when it comes out. Uh, we have something called Ghostwire Tokyo. Timed exclusive on PS5. Let's see here. As people start evaporating from the neon-lit streets of Tokyo, it's clear that something's not quite right. In Ghostwire, Ghostwire Tokyo, strange shadowy figures begin patrolling the streets along with terrifying monsters based on Japanese lore and legends. It's being made by the same studio that brought us that brought you the survival horror, The Evil Within, which is promising. Oh, that, that is... Yo. That's a going to be a fucking really cool idea. If you haven't played The Evil Within, it is a fantastic horror game. And, I mean, we're talking neon lit streets, Tokyo, Japan Legends. Like, that could be a huge game. Uh, Gotham Knights... Uh, I don't want to talk about that one. Stray, I'm I'm pretty interested in Stray. You play as like a cat detective. Not gonna be a groundbreaking game, but it's it'll be fun for a couple of weeks. Park Beyond, uh, is a brand new theme park sim coming in next gen. So a new type of roller coaster tycoon esque game. Open roads. Let's see here. Get ready for a road trip with Tess, Devin, and her mother Opal as you set out to uncover their family secrets. After discovering notes and letters tucked away in the attic of their home, the mother-daughter duo journey, journeys to visit old abandoned family properties to learn more about their family history. Vis revisiting memories for each property holds. Open Roads explores the relationship between Tess and Opal and takes them on a journey into the past they'll never forget. From Gone Home and Tacoma developer Fulbright, this notable upcoming adventure features the voice acting talent of Carrie Russell and Caitlin Dever. I, I think that sounds pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of something that, you know, the Life is Strange people would make. The artwork kind of looks like it could be in that world, too. I, I, I do really enjoy these type of not typical video games where, you know, it's not like action or, uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a really heavy story driven game where your decisions potentially, you know, impact the world. That They didn't say that in this game, but I assume that might be kind of what's going on. I enjoy those games, but still not going to be groundbreaking, but it'll be popular. Uh, I didn't know about this until I saw this on this list. Lord of the Rings Golem. Oh, I remember hearing about it, but I, don't, I didn't know where they were at with this. Uh, prepare yourself to become the precious with Lord of the Rings Golem, a brand new game from Dale... Daedalic Entertainment, where you play as, unsurprisingly, Golem. Starting out in Bardu, Baradur, the Mortar Fortress, where Golem is being held captive, the game will take you through plenty of Middle Earth locations with promises of giant pre uh, precedent environments, each harboring several quest lines and a range of friendly or unfriendly faces. According to the developer in an interview with Edge Magazine, anyway. Aesthetically, the game is inspired by Tolkien's own drawings and plays out like a stealth action adventure game that takes advantage of Golem's dual personalities too. It, it, fantastic idea. It's going to be a fantastic idea. Is it going to be the next biggest thing? No. It'll be popular for a couple weeks, maybe. Uh, I'm interested. I'll play it. Uh, we got Slime Rancher 2. Slime Rancher 1's fantastic. It'll be popular. Uh, Splatoon 3. I don't know anyone personally who asked for even Splatoon 2, but I guess we're getting a third one. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem. I will be heavily investing some time into that because I played the first Plague Tale. Fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful story. You know, third, was it third? Yeah, third person-esque game. Like a fantasy adventure type game. Fantastic. Uh, not groundbreaking. Mario plus Rabbids, I could care fucking less. You know, that will sell to its typical audience of how many people play that shit. Uh, let's see here. We have the Callisto Protocol, which looks like... I mean, I guess I can kind of show you guys what I'm looking at. I should have done that a while ago. My bad, boys. My bad, my bad. 
Just pictures. I just got in the zone. Um, and this we're on GamesRadar.com. So this says fans of survival horror. Hey, hey that's me. May want to have the Callisto protocol on their internal motion sensor. Debuting from a new studio, Striking Distance, the next-gen survival horror game takes place within a maximum security prison on Jupiter's moon and promises plenty of gruesome alien nightmare fuel. Devised from Glenn Schofield, the man we have to thank for Dead Space. Oh! God, I can't nut any harder. What the fuck? Yeah, this game's going to be awesome. Uh, also technically takes place in the PUBG universe. What? Yes, the PUBG universe. Excuse me? I mean, I'm in. You had me an alien murder in Dead Space. That could be huge, depending on which route they take it. That could be a big, big game. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. I'm pretty pumped for this. I'm a, I'm a Harry Potter fan. I, th the thing with Hogwarts Legacy, it could potentially be a ginormous, you know, longish lasting game, if they decide to take it that way. Because in my eyes, if there was a Harry Potter mmo-esque game that actually ran good we've never really had a harry potter game that felt like it ran good and had good story and quest line the harry potter universe i'm not here to argue with you guys but the harry potter universe is fantastic wizards have a really cool they have a really cool standing in gaming and it could be huge if done right but from my understanding they're going in the direction of just this is going to be an open world rpg with lots of shit to explore and potentially co-op i think they should change that into leveling system open world mmo with people but i don't guess arc 2 finally we're getting arc 2 i i mean that game will be huge that that will be a hey well, th this one has i think of the whole list so far i think this one will have the most staying power just because arc the first arc is still heavily played on a daily basis and heavily viewed and it's been out for a long time people love arc evolution so maybe this what does this say i haven't even heard anything about that the dinosaur hunting PC hit is back with a bigger, ballsier sequel that features none other than Vin Diesel. Okay, you're losing me. Has Vin Diesel both in front and behind the digital camera. Yep, the Fast and the Furious star is not only playing a key character in the next-gen survival game, but he's joined serious series developer studio Wildcard as an executive producer. Having long been a fan of the original game, good news or goodness knows what that means for the final product perhaps the dinosaurs will be part of the family all along ha! good jokes dog good jokes um i don't know i didn't know vin diesel was a gamer and i didn't know he gave a shit who knows where that goes uh we have avatar frontiers of pandora bro i'm not even gonna look into that until we get the next fucking movie we've been it's been too long uh we have this squad because i don't think i can say that on youtube uh, Kill the Justice League. We have a lot of fucking superhero games. I don't care. Spider-Man 2. It says TBC 2023. The new one just came out, so I don't want to talk about that. This right here, boys, is something that I'm hyped about. Second Alan Wake game, finally. I love the first Alan Wake. It's one of my favorite psychological thriller type games to ever be made. We're finally getting a second one. Uh, doesn't have a release date yet. I follow the Twitter and the subreddit and the creators of Alan Wake and now this new one are blown away that people are so pumped. I I'm excited. Okay, we have Slitterhead. That sounds like a slur, dude. I don't know about that. It says, during the Game Awards 2021, we got to see the very first look at Slitterhead from the director behind Silent Hill 
Kachiro Toyoma, Toyama, sorry if I'm butchering that, developer by Boken Game Studio. Trailer opens by saying that Toyoma has returned for a new challenge in horror. From what we've seen, this insect-like creature and swords made of blood, it certainly looks like we're certainly looks like we're certainly in for a creepy experience. We want this. We need this. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Yeah, okay. Marvel's Wolverine. Okay. And then it's here. Da -na, na, 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 na. Oh, sorry. Got lost. They're remaking the Knights of the Old Republic. Ah, uh, if you haven't played the original, I'm sorry you're missing out on the greatest game ever made. It is my personally my personal favorite game of all time. And I will be making a lot of videos and streaming and probably take time off work and pumping this game out because I love it so much and I hope the remake's good. <laughs> Uh, see, oh, and to kind of explain it, it is a third-person RPG, same creators as uh, Andromeda, Mass Effect, same type of style, just Star Wars. Uh, something called Season, from Sunset Skies to the Grassy Fields. What we've seen of Season so far is the official trailer looks absolutely gorgeous, following a young woman who leaves a secluded community to explore the world for the first time. You go on a road trip on your bicycle. So I guess road trips are going to be the 2020, 2022 theme. <laughs> Drawing, photography, documenting, and recording the life around you. Set to immerse you in a variety of different uh, societies in a surreal version of the mid-20th century where thousands of years have passed without any progression. That sounds like a cool, you know, one-off game. Outer Worlds 2. The first Outer Worlds was fantastic. Sequel will be fantastic too. Fable 4. Who knows what's going to happen with that one. Dragon Age 4, another one in the genre. I'm sure it'll be good. But, you know, this is kind of what I'm saying is like, you know, these these games that are getting 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, like, they're going to be popular, right? But I don't think they're going to be groundbreaking. I don't think they're going to have this lasting power. Typically what I've seen is like, you know, these new games will come out, right? And people will make the YouTube videos and stream it on Twitch for anywhere between one day to like two weeks. And then off into obscurity. Buried by whatever's next. You know, do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, there's just not anything that's new in the past little while. We're going to pull up Twitch before we close this. I mean, it's I'm it. I don't want to tell you what time it is because I've been up all night. But Dragon Age Four, if that's your series, cool. Mass Effect, they kind of hinted at something new. We'll see. Perfect Dark remake or new Perfect Dark. I don't know. Sports Story. This is kind of gonna be. It kind of reminds me of like a uh, Stardew Valley esque game, but sports related looks cute skull and bones i feel like this game's been in development for a fucking long time <clears throat> so this is going to be like a more a less cartoony sea of thieves which man i i like pirate games so don't get me wrong i'm in i'm interested in this so it says sea of thieves isn't the only open world pirate game out there ubisoft skull and bones is also setting sail with a much more realistic take on pirate battles on the high seas, Skull and Bones is basically Assassin's Creed Black Flag without the assassins, as it's being developed by much of the same team behind Black Flag, and promises a sweeping solo campaign as you as you vie for control over the 18th century waters in the Indian Ocean. But the real focus looks to be player versus player, ship skirmishes online, where each player controls their very own warship and team-based fleet battles. There will also be supernatural elements, See, like, we need something that has, like, battle pass and long-lasting, interesting content and fighting that isn't based on 
either microtransactions having the ability to buy better ships or like like the formula right now that, that some of these companies just don't see is like you want everyone to join a game and be on the same playing field like not having a gun that's better because you could buy it or spend more, more time playing the game like you want it to be even and just have it be who's better at least in my eyes. I, I personally, I'm going to call it right now, Skull and Bones will not be a long-lasting game. It will be fun, and it will have about the same audience as Sea of Thieves, which I don't know how many people play that regularly, but it's not a lot. Uh, Everwild, not familiar with this. Everwild is a new IP from Rare Exclusive for Xbox One that has already caught our attention thanks to its wonderful art style and enchanting world. Another game that will probably be cool for a little while. Little Devil Inside... Hollow Knight's getting a new one. Happy about that. I Indiana Jones potential game. Listen, I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. We'll see. Uh, Ubisoft Star Wars game. There was a Star Wars trailer that just dropped a couple days ago that looks amazing. Uh, Contraband. Brand new co-op game from the Avalanche Studios. Bayonetta 3 will be dope. Project 007. I don't want to be rude, but who gives a fuck? James Bond 007 Goldeneye has already been done. It was fantastic. We loved it. We don't need it again. Uh, Sunaz Saga Hellblade 2. I'm sure someone will be hap happy for that. <coughs> Sorry, when I start talking a lot, I might get like scratchy throat. Dead Space Remake. I mean, of course, that'll be fantastic. Remaking one of the best horror games of all time is never a bad idea. Uh, Metroid Prime 4, cool. Diablo 4, I think Diablo 4, depending on where Blizzard stands, could be a huge game. It could have some staying power, but they need to realize what people love about Diablo 2, what people hated about Diablo 3, and trying to find that middle ground. Like, and there needs to be PvP. They told us there was going to be PvP in Diablo 3, and we never got it. You know, I, I'm not someone who wants all the new classes. I could care less. Diablo is a good story with fun farming. Do that and add some new shit. <coughs> Beyond Good and Evil 2, I'm sure there's a fan base for that. Elder Scrolls 6, we've already talked about. Overwatch 2. I don't know when the fuck we're supposed to get Overwatch 2. That could be fantastic and a big PvP multiplayer shooter. And they're going also the style of having like a, uh, a PvE aspect of it. I, I think Overwatch 2 could really be big. Overwatch is still pretty popular considering how long it's been out. The second game could follow in its footsteps, but... They need to not mess shit up because they're changing it from a 6v6 to a 5v5 on the multiplayer. And they need to not think that people are more interested in the PvE than they are the PvP. The people who are playing Overwatch and the people who want to play Overwatch want to play PvP. Just saying that now. Scorn, with an art style heavily influenced by Aliens HR Geiger, Scorn is a horror shooter. With an obsession with everything bony, fleshy, and internal organy. <laughs> Guns look like they're made from gristle and meat offcuts. Oh. So it's certainly not for the squeamish. I'm that sounds fucking gross and cool. <coughs> Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart is a weird atmospheric horror shooter with some of the freakiest looking monsters we've seen in recent memory. See, what did I say at the start? The horror genre is getting huge popular. And we're going to start getting some big name companies making horror games that are going to be fantastic. But we have to watch out for someone, a company trying to sneak in with like some fucked up like microtransaction bullshit. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time remake. Dude, I'm going to say the same thing I said earlier about a game. Who gives a fuck? They remade Prince of Persia, Sands of Time like 15 goddamn times, I swear. No one's asking for it. 
People are tired of Prince of Persia. They, there's a reason there hasn't been, like, when was the last Prince of Persia game? Exactly. No one knows because no one's asking for it. Vampire, the Masquerade, Bloodlines 2. I'm sure someone's popping for that. That's the last one on the list. A lot of games coming out. I do, there's a couple of games that I think will be groundbreaking and huge. But is there anything that will have, like, the staying power that we have on, like, Twitch right now? I don't think so. I don't think so. Ooh, look at all my stuff. Um, hopefully there's nothing important here. Go check out my Twitch shit. Be a bro. Browse. Okay, so let's look at the top games right now, and let's see if there's anything that has been released recently that is new and dominating the headways. Obviously, just chatting's popular. League, Valorant. Valorant's semi-new in the grand scheme of things. Escape from Tarkov, super popular. Dota 2, Warzone, Teamfight Tactics, GTA 5, Apex, Fortnite, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone, and then Prop Night, which is fairly new from my understanding. <coughs> um, it's a prop hunt survival horror type game. That one I don't think will last long. World of Warcraft, Minecraft. So right here... In our top 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. In our top 15 games, almost all of them have been in this position for like multiple, multiple, multiple years, right? And then we get into some of the stuff that phases in and out. Dead by Daylight's popular some nights. Genshin Impact's popular. We got sports and slots, so gambling. Those are side things. Final Fantasy XIV Online, Halo's kind of here. I think that will continue to drop. Super People, who knows? FIFA is kind of somewhat popular. Zelda, I'm sure someone's playing it with most of the audience. Yeah, 11,000. So that's, that's an anomaly. Warframe, meh. World of Tanks, meh. ASMR, whatever. PUBG, it's kind of falling off. It is 5 a.m., though. So, like, if you just look at all these games, like Siege, Ark, Skyrim, Poker, Diablo 3, like, there's nothing here. Like, Black Desert's kind of new. The new Pokemon game's kind of new. Lost Ark's kind of new. Kind of new. But aside from those, what's new? Halo Infinite's new, but it's fucking Halo. I feel like there's potential. I mean, even, I mean, we're down, what, in the top 50? And Project Zomboid's kind of popular now. There's Overwatch. I mean, there's just no new games that are really popping. Age of Empires 4, if you're the age, if you're part, if you're, like, in the Age of Empires fan base, like, it's cool, but... I guess what, I, what point I'm trying to make is Valorant on the top 15 i think is the newest game i don't think this is going to last i'm sure this is just going to be one of those fall guys where it's popular for you know a couple months and then once everyone has made content in it you know people will just stop playing it you know because that's why you don't see fall guys or among us up here anymore you know so once this is gone and yeah, you just have the same games that have been dominating Twitch and all the other platforms for the past seven, eight years. And maybe not that long. Five years, I would say. It's just stale, guys. That's all I'm saying. Agree or disagree, I don't know. You tell me. Let me know what you're interested in. Again, I did that thing where I wanted this to be a 25, 30-minute video and we're at an hour. So if you made it this far, guess what? You're pretty cool. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.